Heyo everybody, Haku here with my review for Isekai Mao to Shokan Chojo no Dore Majitsu or um I, I actually I actually don't know the um I actually don't know the English version of the title. But either way, uh this is a series that had been recommended to me a lot over like the past year. A bunch of people telling me to read it. Uh, and then the anime happened and I watched the anime week to week. Uh, I just waited for the anime because I knew it was coming soon. But I might read it after this if any of you are interested in seeing that because I actually like the series quite a bit. This is going to be a positive review. So uh, I've been watching anime other than the anime that I've been covering on the channel so I wanted to do some series reviews for some of them that I had just watched on my own time and I know a lot of you have said you wanted me to do series reviews for the ones I watched on my own time. I figured I would do this one first because it was recommended so much. Um, and generally it's probably going to be a little bit short. There's not too many thoughts I have on the particulars of it but I will say the overall theme of this review will be basically this is a titty isekai which is what I usually call this type of anime it's a titty isekai all the way but this is probably the best titty isekai I've seen it's one of those things where it conforms to all the cliches it conforms to all the typical tropes of the titty isekai but it does them more well than any other titty isekai I've seen so it's kind of like it doesn't do anything new or anything super creative. It just does something we've already seen better than anything else has done it. Uh, so it's good in that way. But either way, I wanted to start off. I'll do the production talk first. And this will probably be the briefest section because it was great. It wasn't the best, I guess. Um, it's the best I've seen for Titi Isekai, once again saying that. Um, it's the best I have seen for that. But it's not like super, super iconic, memorable, or anything like that. So yeah, it's just really good, but not that great. One thing I love is that with the designs and the animation and the colors and everything, and the different locations, I feel like there was a good variety. Um, I guess we only really got to see the one city, but there was a good variety in character designs and a variety of a variety in the way that people looked. Um, so it was a good anime, a pretty anime to look at. Of course, there was a lot of fan service, but I'm not just talking about that. Uh, the music as well was really, really great. Uh, the opening and ending, again, good, but just not like this iconic stuff that I'm gonna, like, remember forever and ever as, like, something super special, but it was all really good. Um, and then comes the story. The story in general. Again, the typical story you would, you would see for a Tidi Isekai. Only the best I've seen because of one specific thing that I think is really, really important. When you watch these series, like this reminds me a lot of uh, the Death March Isekai or Isekai Smartphone. Um, when you look at those, and when you look at all these other isekai and a lot of series similar to that, you either see one of two things. You see the bumbling, idiot, bland, main male character who's surrounded by girls with all these different powers and abilities and places in society that sort of protect him and develop around him. And most of them are just there for their powers and places in society and to fall in love with him. Or the other way around, they're all useless, uh, just there for the boobs, essentially, um, and there for the fan service, while the main character does all the work and, yeah, just basically does everything, and they're all kind of useless, except for fan service. But this did it differently in that Diablo was a good character, but also they actually developed uh, Shira and um, Urshetta, and they developed uh, Rem really well, too. So, uh... Yeah, it was something that was different for me in them actually developing characters, and it was one of those things where, other than the main male character, it wasn't an all-female cast. There were actual other recurring male characters. Um, so it felt like a titty isekai, but it wasn't all about the fan service, which again is different because I feel like those past ones have been uh, like 90% about the fan service at least. Um, so I think it's great. Like, Diablo wasn't the solution to every problem, which I thought was really great. And they made me care about the other characters, which was really good. And they made me care about the other characters without sacrificing Diablo. Diablo was still really good in that he started off somewhere, 
and where he ended up at the end of the season was different. He developed, he changed. Um, and one of the things was that he had his own weaknesses and things that he had to overcome, and that was really, really good. Um, I would say that for the story, the one thing I wasn't a super huge fan or fan of was all the fan service. Uh, some of it was just thrown in there nonsensically, of course. Uh, and it was a little bit much. A little bit of fan service. Uh, a lot of people complain about fan service, but I am not an opponent of it, of course. Uh, I think it has its time and its place, and if it's balanced or fits with the story you're telling, then I say good. I say throw in a little bit of fan service. Uh, but I think that this teetered on the edge of being a little bit too much. It wasn't like ridiculous, roll your eyes, uh, too much like some series. But it teetered on the edge of too much most of the time. Except I will say one particular scene, the fingering scene there towards the end, that was ridiculous too much. Just a stupid amount of fan service. That was like this big, huge, climactic moment. And just, I was sitting there like rolling my eyes like, of course, really? Um, so yeah. That's what kind of makes it a, t a titty isekai, though, but it was still good. I would say the one thing that makes it what it is genre-wise is the thing that made me like... It was the only one negative I would really throw at it. Other than that, it was a really, really solid show. And what I would like to take a big section of this review to devote time to is talking about each of the characters, because characters and their relationships is kind of the biggest thing for me in any kind of series. Um, so I wanted to talk about the characters, and first I'll start off talking about the male characters. I'll start off with Diablo. He's a good main character. Um, he was your typical Diddy Sakai main male character. He really was. But he was that, except well written. He was that if it's really well written. I like that he had those struggles that he had to overcome. He had his weaknesses. Um, and I would say that, uh, maybe the Diablo act, where he had to act like this big scary demon lord because he was um mm, he had to act like that because he was a bit socially awkward or socially anxious i think that sometimes that maybe went a little far and was a little bit frustrating it's one of those things where you're watching and you're just like yelling at a character yelling at the screen just do this just talk to them and everything will work out fine um so it is kind of one of those issues where maybe it was a little bit frustrating but i overall thought diablo was a great main character. Uh, Emil, I didn't think I'd love him. I didn't think he would be anywhere near the importance that he had, but I loved Emil. Every time, I was like, like mimicking him saying his name every time he came on screen. I loved Emil. Um, so that is one character I loved. Golford, I thought was a really good antagonist. Um, just the way he was set up in that society and the power he held and the way that his relationship with Diablo's group evolved over the course of the season, I thought Gofford was a really, really good antagonist who becomes kind of not a central antagonist anymore, but he's still not exactly on their side. I thought Gofford had a good character and a good place. Kira was really stereotypical, though. Um, of course, the creepy elf king that wants to take one of the girls and do weird stuff to her. Wasn't there a, wasn't there a character exactly like that? I'm not super huge into Sword Art Online, so I don't really know, but wasn't there a character like exactly like that in Sword Art Online? Um, so yeah, Kira was a little bit stereotypical. I'll throw that one out there. Uh, Sadler was good. I feel like we didn't get much development on him. I feel like we didn't get to know him all that much, though. But he had a good design and a good... Uh, just general character. I kind of wish we just had it more developed, though. I preferred Golford as a character, but um, but Sadler was still cool. Eulerex I thought was kind of lame, to be honest. There were some cool things about them, uh, and he wasn't terrible story-wise, of course. I just didn't think Eulerex was all that great a character. And now, to talk about the female characters, and I will go least to most waifu. Worst to best girl, I guess. Uh, so first off, Medios was a slave trader. She was in the opening, and a lot of, uh, it seemed like a lot of people knew, who read the light novels knew about the character, so I guess she might be somewhat more important coming up. I don't know, or maybe she was somewhat more important there, but I feel like we barely saw her personally. Uh, then there was Celestine. I thought she was a good exposition character. She was a good character that they rolled out whenever they needed to explain something to move the story forward. Um, so that was all good, and explain why something was happening, like, oh no, they can't break in because she has a barrier up. 
Uh, so she was a good exposition character. Edelgard, I will say spears are cool. I was expecting to like her a lot more than I did, uh, but she didn't actually get the chance to get that much screen time to show that much personality, I guess. Uh, I liked her role in the story, but I feel like we didn't really learn that much about Edelgard. Then uh, there's Sylvie. Sylvie had a super cute design. Uh, again, not a ton of screen time, uh, but I don't know. Her personality was kind of on the meh side for me. Um, but yeah, I liked Sylvie for what she was. Uh, then there's Shara. I loved Shara as a character and her development. Um, and she, the way that she was useful throughout the series and that she was a solution to some problems, I think that's good that the main character didn't just come in like a messiah and save everything. I like that Shara had her roles. Um, but waifu, on the waifu side of things, I'm not that into the airheaded type, I guess. Uh, then there's Rem. I thought, same as Shara, basically. Same as her when it comes to playing a good role in the story and having good development. One thing I particularly loved with her, though, was her development when it came to Clem or Clum or Krebscomb. Um, when it came to her, I thought the development was really good. The way that this was this big problem that she had, and she overcame it in a way that she wasn't expecting to, and she had to learn to live with uh, Clem and to not... Uh, to not really blame her for things. So I thought that that was really good. I thought she developed in a really cool way, especially in the later part of the season. Uh, so I really liked Rem as a character. Um, then there was Alicia. Now Alicia is a character that I went back and forth on loving and hating. I went back and forth on loving and hating Alicia uh, because, ah, oh, she's screwing them over. But uh, you can kind of feel sorry for her in a certain way. So I kind of went back and forth. It's like, yeah, she did terrible things, but she kind of had an excuse, but it's not a good enough excuse. Uh, so I thought that I liked Alicia a lot because she was a very deep character. So she was probably one of my favorite characters, if not my favorite character, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I liked Shara as a character a lot, though, even though not so much as a waifu. I liked her as a character a lot. Um, but Alicia may have been my favorite character. I'm not sure. She had a, she had a deep character. Um, and also she was very, very cute, and I'd say that's why I'd put her at second place waifu-wise. First place waifu-wise is Krebscomb, though, because Titty Dragon. That is, like, one of the biggest reasons that I was watching this week to week. I was like, there is some sort of weird Titty Dragon in the opening, and I've got to see what the hell that, what the hell is up with that. What is it? Um, so that's why I kept... Uh, with the series so much that and of course how many times it had been uh, recommended which was kind of a weird amount of times it had been recommended to me a lot um, so uh, yeah uh, so I liked Krebscomb the most waifu wise because giant cool titty dragon form uh, but also as a character I thought she was cool again I liked the stuff with her and Rem she didn't spend too much time in the series uh, but with what little time we with what little time we did have there was a lot of fan service uh, but the stuff with her and Rem was really, really good. And in addition, the stuff with her at the end, where she was trying to hold back, and all the stuff, I guess with her and Rem both, with her trying to hold back and not transform, but Sadler uh, attempting to kill Rem, all of that was really, really good. Just the past, like the last two episodes of the series were both really, really good. I thought this had a really solid finale. Um, and that mostly centered around Krebscomb's character. So within just a few episodes, I really fell in love with the character. Not in like a weird, creepy way, but fell in love with as in enjoying the character. Uh, so yeah, she is a sweet, precious, special child uh, who can also be a badass titty dragon. Um, so I loved the series. Those are about all my thoughts on it from every direction you could take the series. Um, and as a score, I'm tempted to just throw out all these super high scores lately. I don't know why. Whenever I enjoy something, I'm like, yeah, just give it a 9 or a 10 or something. Um, but I actually think I'm going to give it 8 titty dragons out of 10. Um, 8 titties, guys, out of 10. Because it was a good series. It was a series I enjoyed. And I think that's the biggest part of any show is whether it's technically good production-wise or not, is it something that you can enjoy? Uh, because that's the purpose of entertainment. That's the purpose of making something. Um, 
so I thought it was enjoyable, I thought it was good, like I said, it did the same old Teddy Isekai thing we've seen a million times, but it did it the best that I've seen it done. Um, so I think there's a lot to be said for that, to be able to take something that's cliche and to make it good, uh, without changing it or throwing in some crazy twists, just make it good. Um, so yeah, that's, I guess, about it, really. Um, I guess, like, if you did like the video, comment up there to tell me what you thought of this series, what you thought of my thoughts on it. Uh, do you want me to do anything with the light novels in the future? I don't really know. Um, uh, I'm tempted to read more. I don't know. Will there be a season two of the anime? Does anybody know about that? Uh, if there's any word on the possibility of a season two, then maybe I'll just wait for the anime again. I don't know. Um, so yeah, like, comment, subscribe for more of anime, manga, light novels, tons of things on the channel. Check it out and sub if you want. Follow on Twitter if you want as well, and I'll try to um, keep you updated there and stuff for the channel. And I can talk to you there, and I can also talk to you on Discord if you want, because it's free and open for anyone, the Discord server. If you want a link, just ask me and I'll give you one. Uh, we can just all talk there about whatever. So that's what it's there for. So, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, thank you once again for watching, and I'll see you all next time.